Welcome back. Well, one of those endangered species in Western Sydney is the federal member for Chifley, Ed Husick, but he's battling away in his campaign against gouging and downright greedy giant IT companies, namely Microsoft and Apple, and others has proved prophetic given the worldwide tax crackdown and some of the revelations that have come out about them, how the money moves around. We'll be talking to him about that. And we're clamping down on it in budget. Here to update us on his efforts, his inquiry due to report soon, and maybe some insight into the whole Labor Party, Mr Ed Husick. Hello. I didn't introduce you by saying I feel sorry for you tonight. You used endangered species as well, your I opening. Think, given what people are saying about the Labor Party at the moment, I think that's mild, don't you? That's sensational stuff. I think to that's the, almost uh, a compliment. And I don't feel sorry report. for you anymore. I feel sorry for all of us. It's a long campaign. Seriously, how on earth? A hundred days to go. I know. Well, you just, I mean, I've approached it the same way uh, from the get-go. You know, you just got to work hard on, uh, on the ground. And I, uh, I had also the, the fact that I was replacing someone who'd been in the job for 25 years before myself. So I needed to obviously build my own networks and connections on the ground in the area. So I just was in one gear from the start. Do you have labour on your advertising? Because we've I seen do. a lot where they don't. So you're still proud to have ALP on? Well, look, I know this has, you know, for whatever reason has taken off as a, uh, a thing to focus on. But generally, with uh, whenever MPs, uh, you know, sort of um, spend money, the communications budget that's assigned from the parliament to us, um, we're always careful about not necessarily mentioning, you know, or avoiding the politics. I mean, you're clearly going to contrast your side from the other side. but. It's always been, I have always done that, you know, and I've had people say, oh, why don't you have Labor on, uh, on your paraphernalia in terms of my newsletters and stuff. I haven't had it from the start because it's been... Oh, you know, so you don't have it on your No, stuff. I don't. I okay, haven't. So, but on my, look, so you're on arguing my you haven't gajillion, taken it off, you've no, always exactly. been Exactly, and on but my gajillion posters and on my website and on my Twitter account... don't you think it looks account. like you're ashamed of the brand? No, no, no. There's a difference between the money that's assigned to us as parliamentarians versus... You know, like my Twitter account, my website, my Facebook page, they all mention that I'm a Labor member. Now, you took exception to saying endangered species. It's not me, it's those great political pundits saying no, it. No, it's you, because every time I go on... Oh, no, you're you, a you good know? man to come on, because nobody's putting their head up at the moment. We'll get to that in a minute. But oh. do you feel... I mean, how hard is it? Put it this way, I'll ask you simply. Have you packed up your office yet, like the others? No, I have not. <laughs> you can uh, you can see my cam... I'll, I'll actually tweet a photo of my cam... Good, office. I think we need to see that. Politicians should uh, show... That that they still have confidence. I just got to clear the desk a bit. It's not exactly the, uh, the absolute think, symbol of cleanliness. What do you think when you see your colleagues out there with the brown boxes going out? It's oh, a bit I defeatist, isn't it? Uh, I think uh, you know people expect, um, as one of my other colleagues said, they uh, they expect you to um, you know play the full full half and full game, and I think that's what we've uh, we've got to do. But I mean, I think the world of of the MPs that have uh, you know the, the stories are referred to in terms of Alan Griffin and. Uh, and Daryl Mellon, but um, yeah, we all deal with these things individually. All right, you're not going to say. Well, I have to ask you. I mean, yeah, the serve. last time we talked, <laughs> uh, we thought the leadership issue, the Kevin Rudd for Prime Minister push, was well and truly buried. Now you're a known Rudd supporter, out and proud. You resigned uh, your position as whip over it uh, in March. Were you surprised to see these leadership stories coming at the weekend? Yeah, I think it all got sparked uh, with Barry Cassidy's pronouncement on the weekend on Insiders, uh, uh, and then it all sort of went from there. What was your reaction when you saw him say that? Does he know something well, I don't? Well, no. I mean, I just, you know, there are always these people that will make these pronouncements from time to time, and sometimes they'll uh, have a life of their own, and other times they won't. And for whatever reason it has this time, um, I just think, uh, you know, I think, you know, I, well, I'm, I know a lot of people that I talk to, and I certainly am tired of us talking about ourselves. We've got, you know, 100 days of governing to, to continue and we should do that. And I'm going to get to it, but just tell me, as a Rudd supporter, do you think there's any truth in it? Can you see any way he would come back? I can't see how it's... You know, people will talk this up, people will go through the... Like we, like I literally on the weekend had uh, a flurry of calls from uh, journalists which I just wouldn't, you know, I didn't respond to and if they're watching tonight, Sorry, but... What about calls from other MPs? Were some of them going, ooh, we might still have a chance no, to change? No, I haven't had that. I mean, obviously I talk to my colleagues uh, on a whole variety of issues from time to time, but it's not, I've got to say, it's just, it's more a raised eyebrow at how this has all taken off in the way that it has. So you absolutely, where would you, would your vote at the moment be to stick with the current leader? Or if there was a move, if she was tapped on the shoulder, would you be glad to see a change? I don't, I don't see this happening, Janine. I just don't. I mean, people are talking about it, but, you know, the PM said that uh, she ain't going anywhere, so 
That, You're the endangered species. When you like. lean in like that, it sounds, seems like we've got to be talking yeah, in a clandestine no, okay. way. So. Western Sydney is the frontline battle. The, the polling is mm -hmm. showing that even safe seats like yours or marginal are looking endangered. Do you think you would have a better chance if Kevin Rudd was PM? I'm not going into the, the hypotheticals. We've just got to keep, uh, keep basically punching on. We've got to, it, you know, it is a matter now, and certainly close to the election, of being able to have a contrast between two sets of policies between um, in terms of us and in the other side and being able to demonstrate what's going to be good for the community, the economy, the country and, and we need to have more of that focus. OK, well on that I'll be fair. You're, uh, as I said, you early on took on the IT giants over mm -hmm. the pricing in Australia. You had an inquiry. When is that report due out? Well we've uh, only got a few more weeks of Parliament mm -hmm. left and the intention is to have that report brought down before Parliament rises um, and, uh, and we're working to that timeline. Uh, I have to say I was um, surprised and I did speak in Parliament about um, after seeing the Levin uh, committee that reported in the US on uh, Apple's tax arrangements I was concerned that there were some disparities between what that committee found, the US uh, Senate committee found and what was reported to us by Apple and I'm hoping that Apple will respond to the uh, we've invited them to correct some of their um, evidence that they gave to us in March. So those disparities are interesting because you had to drag them kicking mm -hmm. and screaming to give evidence. And this whole issue that's come out in the UK, about Ireland and, and in the US yeah. about their tax dodging basically mm -hmm. has also brought up issues that come to you on how they price products because they were sending, I saw one graphic where stuff was charged to Ireland on a low price but it never actually went there. I mean this revealed a lot about how little tax they're paying, which makes it even more outrageous, the prices we're paying, doesn't it? Well, back in February, I uh, raised the question if they had $6 billion in reported revenue, $5.5 billion in costs, they don't R&D, do any R&D here, manufacture isn't from here, and the only real major cost would be um, in terms of the retail outlets that they maintain across the country. Um, and I did ask at the March hearing where we had uh, Apple before us, to sort of go to explain to us how they set the prices between here and the US. And they indicated that it was a direct relationship between the US and here. But what's come out of the Levin inquiry and what you've you've mentioned, or the Levin uh, committee report, was that there are these all these sort of affiliates or subsidiaries that exist where they're bouncing products within that sort of network before it gets to us. And but it doesn't actually, actually go up. anywhere, so all their Precisely. excuses on why it costs anything, they're actually bringing them in cheaper. Well, I think there is a question to be answered as to the relationship between transfer pricing um, within those affiliates and uh, the way it hits the, where the rubber hits the road here. What about but Apple, the, yeah. if I can just finish on this point, Apple, you know, I mean, there has been a harmonisation of their US Australian uh, pricing um, and there are some others that have got a lot of explaining uh, to do. But we, I think, you know, the more this issue is dragged on, the more it's shown up the interrelationship between taxation regimes and uh, pricing. Given what you went through with them, in the budget, the government said they're going to try and raise billions more and try and stamp this out. But, I mean, you're going to need international cooperation. But given what you went through, what chance have we got of actually trying to claw back some of those taxes? I mean, they just claim, hey, this is all legal and we're going to do whatever it is. That's their defence. And it? Bill Gates said as much uh, when he was on Q&A recently. He, he made the point that, uh, you know, we are just operating within the tax frameworks that are set up and operated and you know, followed by governments. And, uh, you know, from David Cameron through to ourselves through the US are recognising that technology has um, outpaced taxation regimes and they've got, to be, uh, they've got to be overhauled significantly. It's why the G20... Well, Cam David Cameron was talking about the G8, but we've certainly been saying we've got to change this. Where you can have one Apple affiliate that for five years they made $30 billion and didn't pay any tax because of the ambiguity of tax residence, no filing of corporate income returns. I mean, this has clearly uh, got but to be addressed. Seriously, though, given what you went through, what chance do you think we've got of clawing back money from them? They're, they're very arrogant, aren't they? I, I think there is a good chance that, um, certainly within the OECD, there's a focus on rewriting tax rules. Um, you know, I've always, already mentioned in terms of uh, other countries that now recognise that we have to do uh, something on this, that we can't have revenue undermined. And in effect, um, you're allowing these companies to, uh, as it's been described in the Levin report, um, obtain a subsidy because you've got all these domestic firms that can't structure their affairs in the same way these multinationals do. And these multinationals get, as they say, an inadvertent subsidy in the way that they, uh, they uh, apply uh, or, or deal with taxation regimes.
obviously the report comes down, you'd like to be in government to be able to follow it through. Um, what are you expecting is there going to be when you get back to Canberra? Is the next two weeks, I know you're blaming the media, but do you get <laughs> the feeling? Well, you did say it's a lot of journos ringing. Do you expect that this will build? It's not dead yet, is it? And I mean, everybody, a number of MPs have said, even Paul House came out and said, there is definitely chatter going on. Yeah, well, it's, uh, look, there are uh, obviously you have the um, speculation that's evident in the media. Um, naturally, it's going to uh, make people talk. But you know what? I, you know, I'll. Uh, uh, I'm just happy to be a, uh, a backbencher who's Are getting on with the job, rod, and, and I'm not going into any of. <laughs> Flag that because it just, well, it's not the point. I mean, we just. I don't see that this decision is. Uh, is before us and I just don't see what the point is in engaging in the speculation. Well thank you very much for coming in tonight and I hope that whoever is in power after September 14 does something about your inquiry. Do you and me both? Thank, thank you very you. much to Ed Husick. We've run out of time but we'll be back again to do it all again tomorrow night. Join me then.